events? What the frick are those? Let's take a look. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, right. We find ourselves back in Shadow once more. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at events. Okay, so events are an extremely versatile system in Neo Forge and even Forge in this in that case that are is going to allow us basically to hook into different sort of uh, moments in time, let's say, when certain things happen. So, like we've seen last time, we can hook into the computing of the FOV over here, and we can modify the FOV if certain things are true. Now, for the event right here uh, that I'm going to show you, uh, I basically presuppose, as is after a couple of tutorials actually, that I basically presuppose a very hefty amount of Java knowledge. And when I say hefty amount, I think like uh, intermediate-ish, because... You know, you just need to know what an if statement is and things like that. I know that a lot of people are trying to sort of, you know, just, you know, walk through this like with a with a head through the wall. I can tell you it's not a good idea in this case. So this is another appeal basically for you to take another look at some amount of Java if you think that you're not quite up to par. But that's going to be fine because you can always learn. It. And secondary, let's just take a look at events over here. Okay, I've, I've done enough yapping. Let's just see about events. Now, events are really cool as they can do all sorts of things. If we press shift twice, uh, or we don't even need to, but we can actually, let's just do this. And let's, for, for example, take a look at the break event. Just uh, that was the first one that came to mind. Include non-project items right here. And we go to the break event right here. You see, this is extending from the block event, and this one is extending from the event class. So at some point, you will get to the event class, and what you can do here is you can press Control H, and then you will see every single event that exists here for Neo Forge that we could use. And you can see it, we, it, it still continues. It still continues. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. And there we go. So that is why one of the reasons why I've never done, let's say, like a crazy in-depth event um, sort of tutorial is because there's way too many of them, number one. And number two, I mean, it, it's not like all of them are always like immediately, easily sort of, um, not every one of them has a, an immediate sort of use, right? I mean, game shutting down event. I, I don't know. It's it's like an event when the game is shutting down, right? I mean, it's it, you could probably do something with it, but I don't know, right? So there's a lot of different things here that are basically... I'm just not quite sure I would find an example to show all of them. That is why I will show one of them, and hopefully with that, and then you'll be able to take the knowledge that you've gained from the example that I will show you, and hopefully you will then be able to use that knowledge to use in other events, and that is going to be awesome. So the first thing to notice is that there are, uh, let's say, four different types of events, okay? And those can be grouped into like a, like a nice two-by-two -two matrix. There are client events, there are dedicated server events, so those are the, this is basically the first sort of difference, right? And then there are events that are on the game bus, and there are events that are on the mod bus. So that basically gets you either a game client event, a game server event, it then also can get you a mod client event and a mod server event. That's the whole idea, and those are the four different types. It is extremely important to know what the event type is, otherwise, well, it's not going to work, right? So, for example, the Compute FOV Modifiers event is a game client event. Now, the first question that you might ask is, well, how did you know that? How did you know that this is the, that this is the case? Well, let's go into this class. So, control left click on this, and we go into here. The first thing that happens is that usually you get a nice description here. This event is fired on the main Forge event bus. That's not quite right. The main Forge event bus is, right, this would be the Neo Forge event bus, but whatever the case may be, that means that we are on the game bus, right? So if you see F Forge bus, main bus, something like that, then it, we're on the game bus. And you can also see only on the logical client. So as soon as you see, hey, this is a client event, bam, we know dist is client. So we have one side sort of immediately easily identified right so this is client we know this let's say you know this like event bus or forge bus something like that, it doesn't say this you're not sure okay i'm like okay i know that it's on the client but i don't know if i if it's the game bus or the mod bus super freaking easy you look at the event class and you see that it only extends the event over here right and you go down all the way to event and you see it only ever extends the from the event awesome that means you basically not, I think 100% certainty that it is the game bus. Now you might say, why? Well, let's take a look. 
if we go to our tutorial mod class and we go down all the way right here, we can see that we have a mod bus right here. Oh, look at this. So we already have used this before with the FML client setup event. And if we go into this control left click on this, what you will find is that this extends the parallel dispatch. You could say, well, I still don't know if this is the game bus or the, the mod bus or whatever. Exactly. Control left click on this again. We can see we're in this event. Nope, we have to go deeper. Mod lifecycle event. And all of a sudden we can see this one extends from the event class and it implements the I mod bus event. That means if it implements this particular interface, we have a mod bus event. There you go. That's literally it. That is the way to identify whether or not an event is, well, a client or server event and whether or not it is called on the mod bus or the game bus. That's basically the whole idea, and that is the way to identify this. Once you have done this, we can actually also see all of the events that implement the iMod event bus right here, and you can see those would all be mod events in this case, right? So you can see most of them are registering. Most of them are, you know, modifying things that are when you register stuff. There are sort of uh, behind the scenes things, uh, data pack entry events. So you can see most of these are basically always the case when you're sort of, um, yeah, I mean, high level, level overview, the mod events are usually when you're registering things and you want to then modify the registration, let's say, highest level overview. Whereas the game events, and this is crazy because it's called game events, those are the event events that are called sort of, you know, when you're inside of the game, right? So when you actually want to modify something while the game is running, like for example, mm, let's see, when a projectile has hit something, when a entity has been spawned or constructed, when there is a, when a living entity has been healed, things like that, when a living entity has been damaged. So that is then the idea of the game events, right? So the game bus events, that is the whole idea. And then, of course, the client server differentiation is basically, well, the client mostly does everything that has to do with rendering. And that is it. So, you know, changing the FOV, that is a client thing. And then anything that has, that could be possibly used to cheat, let's say, highest level overview once again, that is always on the server. Because if the client was allowed to, let's say, heal you, well, then everyone would just have an event, right, that would just heal them constantly. And all of a sudden, all of the PvP would you know, cease to exist because that would be cheating. Uh, so that's the highest level overview once again, hopefully sort of understandable and hopefully gives you a really good insight into like sort of the basic ideas of events. Now, of course, we're still going to implement an event over here in our mod events class. Make sure, right, this is, is of course on the game bus right here. And we're going to use the living damage event because that's going to be interesting. Once again, just to illustrate a couple of things over here, just so that you know, okay, this is like all of the craziest things that you can do. This is going to be a public static void. This is going to be the living damage method. And we're going to do the living damage event dot pre. So this is going to be called before the damage has been taken by the entity that we've damaged or that we try to damage. Uh, of course, add the add subscribe event over here above the method. And then we are actually going to see what we can do. All right. So let's just take a look. First thing we can do is, well, when we're hitting something, well, the living damage event comes with a couple of fields, which are really useful. So you can see we can get the damage source. We can get um, the amount of damage. We can get the new damage. We can get the damage container. I'm not even sure exactly what the damage container is. And we can get the entity that was damaged. So what we can, for example, say is that, you know what? I want to see the following thing. If the damage that we've inflicted is on a sheep, okay? Then what I want to do is, first of all, cast this to a sheep and I want to do unspeakable things. OK, now what we can also do is we can say, OK, if this is a sheep, that's great. But then we can also say, well, if the source, right, so let's get the source over here. If that entity, if that direct entity is the player, so then we can say if that is an instance of the player and then we're going to cast this to a player as well, then all of a sudden you have access to both the sheep that was just damaged as well as the player that just damaged the sheep. And we can say, well, now we get into interesting things because now because we have access to the player, we can ask all sorts of questions. Once again, I want you to think about, you know, when you're programming and, and doing these things, it's like a series of questions. If the player has a certain thing in his inventory or it's holding something in his hand, if player get main hand in item, get item, what do we want this to be equal to for something to happen? Let's say, for example, if this is equal to items.endrod, right, what does this mean? Well, we have just hit an entity. That is the only way that this event ever gets fired, right? We can even see this here. Living damage captures an entity's loss of health. At this stage in the damage sequence, all reduction effects have been applied. 
The pre-event allows for modification of the damage value before it is applied to the entity's health. The post one contains an immutable representation of the entity's damage sequence and allows for referencing for the value accrued at each step. As an example, you can also see more information on the damage container right here. It, it gets incredibly minute, but in this case, you can just say, hey, with this event and then with this particular method is hold when any living entity is damaged. And then we're checking, hey, was the entity that was damaged a sheep? And was it damaged by a player? And if that is the case, then we're inside of this if statement. And we're saying, okay, did we hit this sheep with an end rod? And yes, that is where I'm going. So if that is the case, then we're first of all going to say sayer.plend send system message component.literal, let's say. And we're going to say that player.get name dot, and then we want to get the string of this, just hit a sheep with an end rod, you sick frick. Okay, just for the sake of argument over here. <laughs> and then what we can do is we can then do even more crazy things. We can say, you know what? Then the sheep is going to add an effect over here, new mob effect instance of mob effects dot, let's say poison, right? Because that, that would be the case for 600 ticks. And we're going to do an amplifier of like 50. I don't know. It, that's a little bit crazy. Let's, let's do an amplifier of like six. So it's going to get a poison seven effect added to it. And we're even going to shrink the end rod. So basically the end rod is going to be gone. So we're going to say get main hand item and we're going to shrink this by one. So we're going to decrease the amount of end rods inside of the player's main hand. And the cool thing about this is that we have just added a new functionality to a vanilla item. Think about this, right? I can hit a, a sheep with an end rod and it's going to do something that it wasn't doing before. And that is why events are so insanely powerful because you can add things to vanilla items, for example, right? Like you can add functionality to vanilla items. You don't even have to have access to the custom classes because events handle a lot of stuff like this for you. Hopefully a really cool illustration. Just for the sake of argument, let's also see this in action because why the frick not? But that is hopefully a good idea on how you can use events and sort of how they, how they can shape the game and how you can make cool ideas and functionality with it. All right, fans, back in Minecraft. Let's just spawn some sheep right here. And what you'll find is that if I hit it normally, nothing happens. However, if I take an end rod and I hit the sheep with it, then you can see it not only outputs this, the sheep is now poisoned for, for a little bit and I can continue to hit it. And you can see it basically subtracts the amount of end rods, right? It subtracts one end rod and there we go. And it always puts out or outputs basically the thing that we've written. Absolutely freaking amazing. I can tell you events are your best friend if you want any sort of functionality that is a little bit more complicated. Absolutely amazing and hopefully sort of understandable on how to, well, add some cool functionality to the game via events. Awesome. All right, the code is of course available down below. Hopefully this sort of introduction to using events was useful to you. Otherwise, in this video, we'll talk about sounds and block sounds. Hope to hear you there. So, yeah.